Can you hear me okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, just to start with an uh, uh, analogy that I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we've all heard, uh, the idea of the way our lives kind of flow like water uh, from uh, 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 at different stages of our day or our, our time. Uh, and, you know, we, we flow from a still pool to an active stream to maybe uh, a stream where there's a, a whirlpool and then we move on through. We're all like the water, but we take different forms and we are aware of the different ways that we can perceive the same thing. Uh, it goes even as far as it, uh, some uh, Zen masters talking about the idea of uh, the similarities between water and ice and that it's we're the same but the form changes but underneath it all remains a, a consistent way of water and the, the reason that I'm using that is just for a, a kind of a, an analogy for what you know most of us in this room were part of our retreat yesterday. And uh, it, it was uh, like, like every retreat I've ever had here, or been a part of here. It, it really gives me a chance to uh, kind of re-energize and, you know, do some things that I'm just not able to do in my daily meditation practice at home. It's different here when you make the conscious effort to drive up the road, come in, sit in that zendo, and embrace the still quiet moments that are part of a retreat. And today, using the water analogy, I'm, I'm, I kind of feel like a whirlpool, you know. I, more so than uh, uh, in past retreats, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little unsettled, which on the surface of it you think, well, why would you go do the retreat if the result the next day is that you're kind of muddled and foggy and what oh, is that all about? And I just don't feel quite like myself this morning. And I, I, I think that it, it, it's one of those things that you could really, if you look at meditation and you look at intense sleep, it, it focused sitting in stillness and quiet, uh, much like the idea that if we didn't have the uh, 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 hamster wheel of samsara, we wouldn't really under, we wouldn't have enlightenment, we wouldn't have awakening because there would be nothing to awaken to, you know. We would have this uh, uh, purified, perfect state that we think we want and really it's just one of those things that has another side to it that we need to be mindful of. And like I say, yesterday was a busy day we did some very good work, I think, in the Zendo. Uh, uh, a you know, tree came up, Terry, Tam Hung was there. Roshi helped us along the way with uh, conversations about our practice and what we were going through. Uh, so it was a, a wonderful sort of a, a group effort. And I, I was just struck by the stillness and quiet of it all, in a sense. And, to, and actually, the thing that, you know, if you have a still quiet day of uh, sitting meditation uh, and you have a kind of a good feeling about how things are going, and, well, that was kind of interesting. Then, of course, you, all you need to do is wait around a little bit for something to happen. And uh, after our day yesterday, Roshi uh, 
took some time with a, a, a bhikkhuni, a, 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 a Buddhist nun, who had uh, s uh, some concerns about performing a memorial service for a couple that had not passed yet, but had to make some decisions about how they were going to do all that. And one of the individuals in her congregation was a veteran, and uh, and she wanted Roshi's input about how best to, to to proceed in the conversation with it, with what is obviously with all of us is a difficult conversation. Like, what are we gonna do? You know, I mean, I'm uh, old enough to have a directive and a will and uh, uh, all those other good things, but do I have one yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> but I understand the port importance of that. Uh, just yeah, I haven't quite got around to it yet. I had to go. To the, I have to go to the retreat. Uh, so, anyways, uh, the uh, we finally get to the day, and it's getting dark, and, and uh, it's calm, and 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 sometimes I, I, I know that they're they're really. This makes me think about the idea of suffering that necessarily might present itself as suffering, but this is once again the idea of mindfulness, like getting a flat tire and understanding that fixing that flat tire in front of your house or taking it down to Walmart around the corner or whatever, that's okay. If it happened at a different time in a different place, you'd have different circumstances, like off the side of the road of the 15 on the way up here or, or something like that. But. My silence was broken by a phone call, well not a phone call, a message, because at 5.30 I figured I'm off the clock, I'll go get the phone. I get the phone, I open the deal, there's a message. It's a message from my brother Tim. And uh, I'm pretty close to all four of my brothers, but I'm probably the closest to my brother Tim. He lives in Las Vegas. And we've shared some great moments in our lives, you know. At, at the age of 15, before he had his driver's license, and at the age of 18, right after I got mine, we were in the same car wreck together. <laughs> I mean, you got to give to your brother like that. And we both survived it and got to Grandma's house for Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, it all worked out, you know. Uh, and then, up oh, darn near, I don't know, 50, 30 years later, Oh, we, we were part of a, uh, he was, he was, he's a skilled guy and has a great motorcycle that he let me ride for the first time in 20 years. But I was able to uh, put down sideways on a road about an hour from the emergency room in Las Vegas. So we shared our first motorcycle accident together. And we kind of made that one okay. That one worked out okay in the end. So we have a pretty tight bond throughout our years. And he's, like I say, three years younger than me. And yesterday, I figured I'll just call him back. I called him back. We spent a long time, too long probably, talking about stuff that old guys talk about. You know, I talked about my, I tore my calf and I went in and they, they took PT and I was using a cane and I... I went in and then my doctor told me I needed to have a cardio checkup and uh, all, and so they did the EKG and they did a, a ultrasound of my heart and all that other stuff and then he said he told me about how his two hip transplants are going and uh, you know all the kind of stuff that you just talk about and I really was uh, I, I had a, I had a, a, after the stillness and the silence, had a a very nice moment just in conversation with my brother. Uh, this whole idea of meditation, sitting in stillness uh, and quiet, is is the way. In, in a daily practice, or even in, in even if we don't have a daily practice, if we're able to catch a moment where we can pay attention, this helps us get into a quiet place where we can be more empathetic and compassionate with ourselves, and then move those feelings 
out into our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our friends. Everybody in our world benefits from our meditation. We don't do it so that they'll benefit from our meditation consciously. It's a wonderful, magical byproduct of sitting in regular meditation that we're able to see like that stream how we're all connected. So we spend some time in the tranquil pool looking out at a very still, calm scene of, of, a, of a pool of water and then we're rushed back into uh, our, our daily existence and these uh, what we'd call life, actually, the 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 uh, re the uh, 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 reoccurring, constantly reoccurring, ruminating thoughts that then take us to places where we're we're not mindful. We do, we can't stop. We can't understand that I need to take a breath. I need a still moment. I need to just sit with this for just a second just to see what it really is and so it's to me it's interesting that when you do a day or so of that that the net result is this kind of disorientation if you will because we, we come to a, a natural state of, uh, of dissatisfaction of uh, worrying about a situation in our in, at our home or with our kids or whatever and our, our refuge is there that's why we call them the three jewels the Buddha the Dharma the Sangha they're there for us if we remember about that we can take refuge in them and turn the light, as Dogen said, inside and uncover our Buddha nature to see it, because it's there, it's always there, it's there in all of us all the time. But the things just get piled over that we can't really uh, uh, access it sometimes. And so, uh, so hopefully we're able to see that happening and take the time that we need to uh, become still, become quiet, and then mindfully, not, not trying to control anything, because that's the other thing that Buddhism, uh, it, that's the other place Buddhism is different in the world, is it, it, it does talk about how we might suffer, how we uh, might feel dissatisfied, uh, but it admits two things, that we can't control that. And so to think that we can control it just really adds to the problem. But in and through meditation and, and contemplative thinking and compassion for others, we can get to that spot where we see our true nature. And it's not one of those starts here, stops here sorts of things. It's one thing that is, if you're a Buddhist, you have to kind of get used to the idea that you're going to be doing this for a while. And, you know, if you, if you look at how it can work, if you really dedicate yourself to the idea of a daily practice, it will help you. Uh, greatly to be more aware of, of what it is that's kind of got you agitated now. Uh, so my, uh, I, I guess my my point in all this is because we all. Uh, we're able to uh, sit the meditation and uh, come to uh, 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 finish the uh, idea 
of uh, taking some still, quiet time for ourselves, that when we, when we get back to real life, uh, sometimes we have a, a, a good uh, uh, interruption, like a call from a brother or a friend or those things, or, or we get into a situation where we get together with friends and, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, play a board game, do something that's fun. And, and that also is different than the meditation process but is, uh, and not really samsaric, because we, we, we're enjoying ourselves during that time. We're having a good time co connecting with, with others. And through that connection, we build compassion. Through that connection, we understand the value and, and quality of sitting still for a brief amount. So, I, I'm going to make this probably shorter than normal, but I, I, my, my question to you, or my suggestion to you, is uh, the idea that you take a moment, move down close to a quiet, still point of the shore, and sit and contemplate the still quiet nature of a pond or a pool that you that you have in your mind and then you know go into those meditative states as best you can on a daily basis and then pick up the phone and call your brother or your best friend or your mother or someone you care about and in a sense kind of have the experience and then solidify it in the world with someone you care about and have compassion for. Thank you.